Hey guys, um, I'm back with you for uh, another project. Um, I uh, told you we were going to make some make some axe covers for some of the axes that we've been rebuilding and stuff. Well, um, the first axe cover I already made it, which uh, without you guys. But uh, remember this axe? This was our uh, this was our long-term survival type axe that uh, I made and uh, or short-term short survival axe but uh, I went ahead and I made a uh, axe cover for it and you know it, it goes on pretty slick just slide it on and pull the knot you pull the knots on the th on the things and, uh, and it stays on nice little sheath but since I already made this off-camera and uh, this axe project is basically done. I thought that I would go ahead and make basically the same cover, maybe not quite as as not quite the same shape for the small wood wood crafters axe axe. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna make a uh, axe cover for this, same style as our uh, big project axe was, but uh, just a just for this one. So. I'll be right back and I'll get get set up for it. Okay, guys. Um, so first thing I did was I, I got a stump I'm kind of working on, and I put a piece of uh, plywood on top of it, and I've got some spare leather here. Um, I bought this leather at the flea market. Uh, I bought a big giant bag of it for like three bucks. It was pretty cheap, and uh, when you think about it, it makes a pretty cheap axe axe cover when you want there but anyways so I made a pattern out of a piece of cardboard um, and how I did that was I actually took a piece of leather and I just played around with it until I got it exactly the way I wanted it on this axe and after I got the piece of leather bent out the way I wanted it then I went ahead and I traced the leather and cut it out and then put it onto a piece of cardboard so I always had this pattern. But basically this is all I did with the leather was I just folded it over the head like so and then and then I cut it out the way that I wanted it so that it would it would cover it nice. And this is one of them deals where you could just kind of play around with it until you get it the way you want it. Um, this other axe here that I that I did it uh, it actually didn't have this in it and then I thought well you know what I'll just cut this out because I don't really need it there anyways and it had a little bit of design to it and made it kind of a little bit fancier or whatever it's not as fancy as most of them but it is what it is and then I I went ahead and I I folded it in half and I put this um, rivet in it here so that it would hold it and then I I started marking out my holes and we're going to go ahead and do all this on camera, but I'll explain it to you anyways. And then after I got all my holes marked out, I had a pin, and I uh, pinned this, this bottom part so down to this stump so it would stay nice and flat. And then I went through and I punched out all these holes with a, uh, actually I used an old ice chisel, so or an ice pick I should say, and I just punched out each hole. I punched them out until they were just barely sticking through this other side. And then I turned it over and punched this side back through the other way. And then I went ahead and stitched it and then added this rivet here. But uh, we'll get to that. But anyways, so so the next thing you do is once you, uh, once you figure out what you want as a pattern on your piece of leather, your best bet is to get a piece of cardboard and then cop, after, after you get your pattern cut out on, on the leather, get a piece of cardboard and you cover and trace it onto the piece of cardboard and cut it out and take this piece of cardboard and put it away in a folder because the next time you do an axe and if it happens to be the same style as the one as one that you've already done then all you gotta do is pull out your piece of cardboard and you can use this as a base pattern and then and then you can go ahead and do like I did and cut out cut out all your extra little stuff if you want or add some extra stuff whatever you want to do you could do different stitches whatever but you always have this pattern as a as a base pattern is what I'm getting at. So the next thing I'll do is I'll since I already since I have the pattern from the last axe I did, I'll take this pattern and I'll lay it down on a piece of leather, 
I'll situate it so it's always so it's all on the level. And I'm going to take a piece of pencil and go all the way around it and trace it. So now I'll tell you guys right now, I'm not a major major leather worker, so nothing I do is real fancy. It just is functional and uh, it is what it is. I think we can do this, and I'm pretty sure we can get through it. But uh, there may be things that I'm not quite doing exactly right because I don't do leather every day that a leather worker will tell you, hey, you shouldn't have really done it that way. And he's probably right. But I'm going to show you how I do it, and I think it's going to work out okay. So let me uh, go ahead and trace this out, and I'll get back with you. So all I'm doing is just taking my pencil and just tracing around the edge of this thing. And you just trace around it all the way around the thing until you get what you want. And like I said, this is just a base pattern. You can always um, do some more cutting on this, but once you trace this out and cut out this base pattern, this is all the leather you're gonna have for the sheath. So you better make sure this is, this is what you want. So, you know. So we'll go ahead and trace the rest of this out and I'll get back with you. Okay, so once you uh, go ahead and get your pattern traced out, you just move away your pattern. And I don't know if you guys can see it or not, but there you go. You got the pattern on here. So the next thing we'll do is we will take an X-Acto knife and we'll go ahead and start cutting this thing out. Very, very carefully not to uh, go off the line. But if you do go off the line, you can always uh, adjust it. And like I said, there you go. I have an exacto knife to do this. I'm sure that a regular leather worker's got a special knife that he uses. But uh, I don't have that knife, so we're just making do with what we got. So let me go ahead and finish cutting this out, and we'll get back with you. Okay, so we got our piece of leather cut out. And uh, most leather, not all of it, but most of it has a rough side and a smooth side. And I'm going to put the rough side in. Um, it's your preference, whatever you want to do. But basically, the next thing you want to do is you want to take your leather... You want to fold it like so, and if you cut your pattern out right, it will be very, very close to uh, where it should be. The next thing you want to do is you want to stay here for a few minutes. You want to just kind of work it a little bit. Um, I know there's a trick where you could wet it and preform it, but I'm really not. I've never done that before, so I don't know how to do it. Uh, I'd have to do some breeding on it, and probably I could do it. But anyways, I just sit here and I work it a little bit with my hands until I get it crushed down to about where I want it. And then I'll get back to you. Okay, so next thing I do is I go ahead and once I get it crushed down to about where it is, I try the axe in it and see whether it's going to uh, even be close enough for it. And this one obviously doesn't have the cutout on it right here. But that's okay, because this is just going to be a plain Jane Act cover. But when I'm looking at this, if you can look at it, you can see that the blade comes through, oh, down to here. And then there's like an inch of material here. I really don't need that much there. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take, I'm going to cut, oh, about a half an inch off, off the bottom of this. Just to shorten it up a bit and make it look a little bit tighter. Um, so I'll be right back with you there. Okay, so I went ahead and I cut a little bit off the end of this, and now we will uh, just get that axe out and we'll try it again, just to make sure it's what we want before we go permanently sewing it together. So now it fits in there about like this, and yeah, that is about what we want right there. So I think the next thing I'm going to do to make this a little bit easier to sew is I'm going to go ahead and snap the two holes in it and put the two rivets in it. Well, at least this rivet down here. And then i got to show you one more little quick thing before we put the second rivet in. So let me go ahead and pop, use a clip to snap and snap two holes in it. I'll be right back for that. Okay, guys. Um, 
this video is kind of running long so I'm going to go ahead and uh, cut this thing up into two or three parts so I'm going to go ahead and say uh, thank you and uh, if you like the video like it share subscribe um, I'm looking for some more subscribers and stuff so uh, you know just hang with me and uh, if you want to subscribe that'd be great um, thank you